and it created a lake then you got glacier lakes i'm not gonna read through this whole thing so you have glacier lakes basically from melted ice you know because we went through the ice age you know some parts and regions melted and created lakes then you got tectonic lakes this is a very important lake because lake victoria is a tectonic plate i mean tectonic lake and why is that important the reason why that's important is because if we go back to if we go back to the layers of the earth the tectonic plates are made up of the earth's crust and the upper part of the mantle layer underneath together the crust and the upper mantle are called the lithosphere and they extend about 80 kilometers deep lithosphere is broken into giant plates that fit around the globe like puzzle pieces all right so the tectonic plates are connected to the mantles all right and if we go back to this right here you'll see tectonic lakes right and i'll just run through the other lakes there's lakes called fluvial lakes all right um and the flow of a river is usually not straight but the river bends and meanders through its course due to the uneven and non-uniform topo topography of the land as river flows a number of lakes are formed all right so those are fluvial lakes then there's landslide lakes you can read about that there's solution lakes there's Aeolian lakes, there's shoreline lakes, anthropogenic lakes, and meteorite lakes. All right. But I stopped on tectonic plates because clearly I did the research. But Lake Victoria is a tectonic plate lake. All right. And as you can see, tectonic plates are made up of the crust. And when we did the research in the start, I was showing you the different, I don't know why my computer's acting slow today, but I was showing you the different, all right, well, they, they took me to it, all right, so you got the mantles right here, all right, so you got the crust, and then you got the mantle, and the plates are located within the mantles. All right, now let's go to let's go to how did Lake Victoria originate? So it's basically telling you the size of Lake Victoria, second largest freshwater lake by volume. And it says it is the source of the longest branch of the Nile River, the White Nile, and has a catchment area of 184,000 square kilometers, which is 71,040 miles, miles, square miles. The lake lies within an elevated plateau in the western part of Africa's Great Rift Valley. Keep that in mind, Great Rift Valley. All right, matter of fact, let's go look at what a Great Rift Valley is. All right, the Great Rift Valley is a vast geological and geographical and geological feature that runs north to south for f some 5,000 kilometers from north northern Syria in southwest Asia to central Mozambique in East Africa. The valley varies with width from 30 to 100 kilometers and in depth for a few hundred to several thousand meters it is named 
by the explorer John Walter Gregory. All right. So this Great Rift Valley goes almost 5,000 kilometers into the earth. You understand what I'm saying? So this lake is laying on top of it. I don't think you guys understand that. <laughs> I don't think you guys understand that. Let's go back to the nature books. You remember when I told you guys, right? That you can see that the nature books. Mm -hmm. Remember I told you guys the womb of the planet. Look, it's here. Let's go to the Wikipedia that was showing us. I think the mileage. Uh, looky here. Looky here. We are on the bottom. Look, 5,100 what? Kilometers. Kilometers, right. 5,000 would be a little bit further up here. In between the what? Hold on. The Let's outer. Go. Huh? It'll be it'll be right where the the inner and the outer meet. Correct. Which is where? Where does yeah. you see me put? That's right, right where, yeah. right where the womb would be. And the lake is what is sitting on top. Where say of, spont spontaneous, right? Huh? Oh, In you talking about book books? books? Yeah. yeah yep it's a it's a spontaneous membrane on the outside of the blah brain and then on that outside of the brain is where the mantle would be so it's basically sitting the womb is sitting on that so that so the african great rift is really the birth canal mm -hmm. which goes down into the planet so those that advocate um out of America would have to prove that there's a rift that any water system is sitting on that goes 5,000 feet into the ground. That's that's something they're gonna have to prove right off the bat. But of course, I like I'm gonna go even deeper. All right. So this is the half section of the planet right then you can go and you can see now it goes 5,000 kilometers this is 5100 kilometers which would mean that 5,000 would be somewhere in between here all right so these are the layers of the planet all right but we we're gonna read some more all right so the geography part of the rift forms the the becca valley in lebanon separating the lebanon mountains and the anti-lebanon mountains the south in israel it is known as the hula valley separating between the galilee mountains and the golan heights further south the valley becomes the jordan river which flows southward through lake hula into lake tiberius in israel and then continue south through the Jordan Valley in into the Dead Sea on the Israel Jordan and border from the Dead Sea southwards the rift is occupied by Wadi Arabah and then the Gulf of Aqaba and the Red Sea the southern end of the sea marks I'm oh, sorry the southern end of the mark the Red Sea marks the fork in the rift it's where you may get your whole uh, Moses when he put a staff in the ground and all, all these things are not strange. It's just that religion has basically took science and made it into a belief and made it into these uh, these 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 fantasy fantasy stories. All right. So 
but when you read further you, in, in noon noon helps to open up these things this is where i'm getting this information from all right so i'm not gonna read this whole thing but basically that's where lake victoria sits so let's go at look at a map all right so as you can see lake victoria sits on that rift they even give you a little map showing you right we just read that lake victoria sits on the rift all right and these tectonic plates so basically under the lake you'll have a lot of biological life inside of the lake i think i think they're going to talk about that as well in the um hold on ecology lake victoria plays a vital role i'm reading from this part right here lake victoria plays a vital role in supplying millions of people living around the shores in one of the most densely populated regions of the earth the ecosystem of lake victoria is surrounded by have been badly affected by human influence in 1954 to now perch so I, I don't want to read all of this this is a lot to read i just wanted to get to the part of where it's where it's life to about oh it was right up here sorry so it says lake victoria is relatively young its current basin formed only or only 400,000 years ago which is a lie they just don't know when it was formed that's that's a complete lie because lake victoria was formed a even longer time ago but what happens to the lake is that it dries out and it and it refills so the bottom of the lake basically you know it just it goes through a lot of changes like <laughs> Like in the nature books, he says that the planet goes through a period of menopause, right? Which is like almost like a drying out of the vagina, right? So that's the same thing that's happening with the planet. The, the, planet, the planet goes through that same process, all right? So if we read on, you'll see it says that when westward flowing rivers were damaged by the upthrown crustal block, so that means that now there's a blockage taking place between the um the crust and the mantle so the crust kind of like dries up and stops it from flowing again all right the lake's shallowness limited by limited river inflow and the large surface area relative to its volume make it vulnerable to climate changes cores taken from the bottom show that lake victoria has dried up completely three times since it formed these drying cycles are probably related to what the past ice ages the ice ages started around 18 million years ago they might tell you a hundred thousand years but ice age or when the planet started to cool down which is called the miocene age that's what it's called the miocene age in regular science in our science we know it to be evolution but the miocene age is when things started to cool down which are times when precipitation declined globally the last the, sorry the lake last dried out 17,300 years ago then filled again beginning in 14,700 years ago the fantastic adaptive Re, uh radiation of its native uh what's that sit citlids looks like citlids has taken place in the short period of time since then so as we can see the lake has periods of drying out and filling it up so it has really no origin or actually its origin was when the planet first um was created but the problem is that this particular vagina or womb of the planet, rather, it dries out and it has its periods of menopause back and forth, just like a woman does because the planet itself is a woman. All right. And un in the in the water, there's it's home to about I think it's like millions of species of marine life because anytime lava or mantle hits hits the earth when 
you gotta we have to understand that the conditions for growth is warmness wetness and darkness so when a planet is creating organisms because organisms just don't come from anywhere same as human beings we didn't just come from anywhere the creative source for that would have to be within the planet we didn't come from aliens either they didn't come here and constructed constructed us on mars and then brought us here and, and transferred us to planet earth for things like no we came from right here in the fire form you understand what i'm saying and if you look at the the geology this and the thing is i don't want to get into all that right now because we're going to go into a two or three hour discussion i'm just giving you guys the birthplace of the gods and even the ancestors called hold on call this hold on let me see something I want to give you guys the name that the ancestors call it. It's called Nalubali. So, right here, in summary, Great Lake, it's called uh, U, Ukerewe. That's what it looks like. Ukerewe is Nyanja. Yeah, Ukerewe is the Great Lake of the land of Chua. So Chua, I think it was the name of the people that lived there. Let me, I, I'll read the whole thing there. All right. So starting from the top, it's uh, Nyanja Ya Yukere, Yukere, Yere, Great Lake of the Land of Chua, meanings and pronunciations. All right. It says Yukere, also called Naubale, and Nyanja Naubale is the Great Lake form formerly called lake victoria so they probably they already renamed it they like we ain't calling it lake victoria no more <laughs> because lake victoria is named after the queen after they done came down there and renamed our lake well you know through colonialism and things of that nature all right so So Victoria and Nayan Nayanza. All right. So meanings and pronunciations per the online Chichewe Chuchewa dictionary. Nayanja Nayanja means lake. Almost spelled the same is Nayanza, which is Nai Anza, which means an enormous collection of primordial water. Hear that word primordial water see that the ancients already knew all right let me add too that what a newt just read they're telling you that the name the actual name of our ancestors living today over there by lake victoria in their tongue it means primordial water and it means that it's talking about this is the primordial water that came from the womb of Mother Gertha Earth. Not the primordial water that's spoken of the, the all of the Ogdoad, which are the eight planets, and Ray, which is the true sun, came out of. That's not the same thing. Remember, as above, so below. There's a big version of things and there's a smaller version. So the the waters of New or Noon is not the same origin in the sense that the the orbs came out of the 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 nine ether abyss of chaotic waters and formed and they were formed by the sun Rhea Ra. Okay, and then on a smaller level the sun impregnated the planet with nine ether rays and ether and the pygmy gods came out of the, those same waters that the earth was formed from because the sun put those chaotic waters on all the planets that would be considered, you know, physical, right? Even though they called the first couple of planets from Mercury to Mars, they would say they're like rocky planets and other planets are like gas planets. Not true. Those 
Jupiter and Saturn are suns. They're the gas planets. The other two planets, Serana and Neptune, or Uranus and Neptune, they are, um, they have water and stuff on their planet, um, where it's underneath the surface, but when the top half is in, it's water on all the planets, and they all the same color, lilac. So they would be physical too. They're not, they're not gas, um, like the scientists are trying to make it appear. But anyway, the waters of creation is used as well as the other materials to make all these planets. And Afunu states that, Nupu states that in the nature books, there's water on the, on, under the surface of all the other planets. And even the suns have water lungs. Uh, Ju Jupiter, Saturn, and the sun have water in them, but they're not planets. All right, so our ancestors know that the pygmy gods came from here. That's the point I just wanted to make. We're back to the schedule program. Too many to call it peace and war time. Mm, Wakanda. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Due to the close, due to the closeness of Nyanja and Nyanza in spelling and general meaning, more than likely they are the same word with the same combined meaning. All right, so this is how you pronounce it. U K Rewe. Okay, it's U K Re Reye. Oh man, I'm about to do that on the Wapian thing. Ray. Oh no! <laughs> Don't say Ray. They're gonna say yeah. <laughs> Hormone oh, sexual. Oh, we oh, gotta go like to Lake Victoria. <laughs> or do like <laughs> or do like Takashi Treyway. <laughs> All right. So the pronunciation is U K Reyway. So that's U K Reyway. The prefix U means land of or country of thus you k rayway means the land of the k rayway the k rayway people are the k rayway people who are the i guess this would be kwa people the k and ch are interchangeable therefore it is likely you k rayway was once spelled something similar to UK Ray Way and UK Ray Wa. This means likely due to the variations of what people were called the Kwa people or the Ewa people or the Ewe people. The Che, sorry, the Kwa people were also known as the Nyanja people of the lake who speak Chin, sorry, Kenyanja the language of the lake. This is the same language of the Kechewa, which was the same, sorry, it was the language of the Kechewa. In summary, Great Lake UK Railway is Nyanja Ya UK Railway is the Great Lake of the land of Kewa. And Yanja Naubale is, Luo, is the Lu, is the Luo name for the Nyanja Ya UK Railway. And Yanja is N Nyanja and thus ba based on the root spelling and usage means the same as Nyanja Nyanza. Na Lu Ba Ele. Na Lu Ba Ele means mother of the guardian gods. All right. Now, when you go into the nature books, you see who those gods are. There's a there's nine of them by by um by race, rather. So there's nine pygmy gods by race, and Afro Uno goes into great detail of who these guardian gods are, gods are, and where they and where they were born. Like I just showed you where they were born. All right, so. So the name of the lake also by our ancestors gives away where we were born. All right. Now, let's go. Well, another special thing about Lake Victoria that is the second largest freshwater lake. What's the first largest freshwater lake? That would be Lake um, 
the lake in North America. But how was that lake formed? And what kind of lake was that lake? Let's see. Because we found that Lake Victoria goes into the planet with this creative energy um, and this, this mantle crust which creates organisms because when that mantle comes to the surface it creates different organisms right now that particular aspect of the lake is barren so you won't get any more gods being created so because you'll get questions from those that are you know claim to be scientists well why they not create no more human beings that's because it's barren right now as you can see the lake is closed up it's not is not is not ready for the birth of human beings again you understand what i'm saying so not based human, on the condition not human. huh not human not beings. human beings no, sorry not human beings but these gods that created us human beings because they came first in their fire flesh and blood form and then as things got cooler then they created us through sexual procreation and things like that that's a whole nother discussion for a whole nother day we we don't have enough time to do that right now because we'll run into like six seven hours but we're gonna give you guys bits and pieces of the information where we come from and how did we get here and things of that nature that's it. You made this.